Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's been a long evening, and my throat is a bit uh, screwed up already. But uh, we'll start with uh, alternative data. We've heard about alternative data today, uh, earlier as well. Um, I'm going to be speaking about this, and I'll, I'm not going to go really in depth about it, but I'm just, I just want to seed this idea about what's happening in the world of alternative data. I'm Devashish Faloria. I'm the co-founder and CEO of GeoIQ. We've been building this for the last three years. Uh, we've been, you know, integrated into multiple systems, and you'll see how a lot of these modern fintechs and now banks are leveraging this bit of information in their day-to-day real-time decisioning. Um, it is alternative data, but as the name suggests, we are geo IQ, geo as in geographic. Uh, we are giving one piece of intelligence which we feel is very, very paramount in a data poor country like India. How to know your customer better? Um, we're talking about not just data, we're talking about data intelligence. So there are two parts to it. First, the data, we'll talk about it. Intelligence, uh, we are one of the first companies in the world to build a location AI platform. It's being used in the US. It's also live in India. Uh, we'll go, I won't mention or go deep dive into the AI component of it, but you'll see what the results are. Um, so let me just try and change, okay. Uh, We've seen again, uh, you know, we heard Sohail um, from Bharat Pay talk about how many UPI transactions, how many transactions are happening. This is a snapshot from GeoIQ's database over an hour. This is people asking for loans. Now we're not going to go into what green means and what red means right now, I'll come into it later. But this is like, you know, transactions, uh, people asking for loans constantly. Broadly, what it tells you that a lot of people are hungry for borrowing. Uh, they're asking for it from everywhere. The, uh, we may or may not know this customer, but you know, because there are so many fintech companies, we don't even have much time to decide. Um, probably, you know, some people uh, say two days to decide, but now people are doing it within, you know, minutes. So how is that happening? Uh, we'll go into the details of that. So customers are coming from everywhere. People are asking for loan from everywhere. Could be from village, town, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what these customers want is, I mean, it's like Sita Swamber right now. 10 people are ready to give you money. So you have, you're rich with options. You're really rich with options in terms of where do you want to get loans from. So now that's, that's a, you know, demand supply problem here. Uh, a lot of people want to give you loans. Now, second problem is that why location? What does it signify? You know, in very generic uh, terms, the moment we start earning money, we try to find a place to live or work, which is kind of gives our worth. I will live in Bang uh, Bandra Kata Road if I can afford it, but I can't. So I go and live in Chembur. I don't, but I live in Bangalore, but similar kind of, uh, you know, statistics. But if we know where you live or where you are calling or asking for a loan from, can we start understanding what you are? So that's what, you know, a um, lot of question about location intelligence is coming into it. It's one of the alternative data sources. Uh, like Bharat Pay mentioned, modern fintechs, now even banks are looking at all sorts of things to make these calls. Credit score. Okay, may or may not be available for 80% of the population that you want to cater to. Income statements, nobody is going to give it to you in real time, but let's say a fraction of it is available. Bank statements, again, you're asking for all these data. You're reading your, you're also seeing what mobile phone model are you using to take a call. If you're using an iPhone, you'll get a different discount on Swiggy, by the way, uh, compared to if you're using an Android phone. So that's how these prediction models are taking real-time decisions. Um, so that's what you know, most modern companies are doing in terms of lending. They're taking a call based on lots of alternative data sources. At some part of this customer journey, they're also taking an address, very important. Everybody's doing that, traditionally everybody has done it. Now they're also getting the lat long from the phone. So what that does, is it now starts telling me something about the behavior of the person. Now we'll see two pictures here. Um, intuitively, if I'm put in this street, I'll say, okay, I'll give a 5,000 rupee loan here, comfortably. You put me in that street, I can give a five lakh rupee loan here. 
that classic bank versus fintech kind of argument that uh, Bharat Pay earlier put it. But humanly, you put me, I'm from Bangalore, you put me in Jalandhar. I can make, I can make a sense of what is happening. Who lives here? Are these really wealthy people? Are these, you know, low income group people, middle income group people? I can make certain judgments. But in my head, what am I doing? I'm trying to understand, oh, is this street very crowded? I don't see many stores here. It's heavily populated. The real estate value here is different. A lot of parameters um, that can be captured about this point on the map. Uh, GYQ today is capturing more than 2000 attributes about each parameter. The idea is that can this be used to segment you, um, two users coming from two different places? So what is happening in these databases in real time decision engines? You're getting all this information about users. Oh, it's a risk, you know, this is the income, this is the credit score. You also get this. You ask this field at some point in the user journey. Or through the device, you're getting this number, which is basically the lat long of this user. Machine has no clue what this means. You and me, if I saw cannot place address and uh, let's say Dharavi address, I can make a difference. But machines are not doing that. Machines don't understand this bit. Banks. Old banks used to send people to homes, costly, unreliable, time taking, and you're collecting latent signals about where this user is coming from. Now imagine the mathematical difference between these two addresses is available to you in real time so that you can take a real time call. We deliver this information in uh, less than half a second. So that's, you know, really by the time your page loads, the information is already available to our clients to decide um, where in the metric of my ideal user does this user fit. So we're making, like we said, we're making sense of user addresses for decision engines. We're primarily focusing on companies which are making real time predictions. Every FinTech today is making 15 predictions per user. What is my collection propensity the moment, the moment this user comes in? What is the risk? Where, what product should I sell? where in the income back, everything is being done by prediction models. And therefore, the more data you feed into prediction models, the better the model gets. Unproved, but let's see if there are any proofs here. So like I said, what in real time, these banks and these fintech companies are doing is they're just sending us this address or that lat log number. Instantly, they get an output. The output is a number, which tells you the propensity of this user on some scale specific to that client. Now I could be giving a 50,000 rupee loan. Another company might be giving a five lakh rupee loan. So my understanding of an ideal user is very different from that user. So you get a score specific to what you need. Um, you also get the raw variables, but there are 2000 raw variables. So these are being delivered directly into your system in real time for uh, uh, engines. How we are creating this user geo identity is basically looking at satellite imagery, map data, business intensities, to get a sense of what is happening in this area. To give you an example, you know, there's too many factors, we can't physically pick them up. But one factor which gets picked up in the risk profile of users across companies is the presence of auto repair shops, you know, intensifying on a street. Now, what does that tell me? I'm going into a lower income group area. Bandra doesn't have a high intensity of auto repair shops. Bandra has high intensity of expensive restaurants. I go to Kurla, the intensity of auto repair shop goes, goes up and it tells me, okay, something is changing here. And it correlates well with my understanding of who's risky and who's not risky. So once you've figured out that equation, you can then apply it at scale. Um, so we are providing the street level intelligence. I think everybody, every bank has used some level of location intelligence. They look at pin codes, they block out pin codes, but they also lose out a lot of opportunity. We are providing these answers right down to the street level and the actual address of the user. See, but the problem, uh, the second problem that comes in, and this is what our pitch in the American markets and Indian markets has been, that you give 2000 features to, a, uh, you know, a, uh, a bank manager said, okay, no, just tell me population, just tell me affluence numbers. I'm not going to pick up latent answers. To give you an example, a 2014 study in the US, it's a big study published in New York Times. It said 
the lending behavior was highly correlated to the occurrences of um, sugar related diseases in a particular street now this intelligence came after a lot of work what our machine learning platform is doing is that if you know your pattern if you have already given 100000 loans and you know the profile of your user good user bad user risky user not risky user you throw it into the machine learning platform and that's where the ai gets working and tells you what factors out of these 2000 come together to give you this particular answer and then that's an equation which you can use in a scalable fashion um an example it's you all all fintech companies are doing this uh, one of our largest clients is doing using it a cus customer walks into your system um an app let's say your old risk model was giving you know lot of traditional companies use a rule based mechanism which is not very accurate uh, but a new risk model which basically is taking into account not only not only what the company knew but what also giq is telling it starts telling you that hey we are not replacing all this we are saying that location itself or these attributes about location has a 10% impact on your business what we have seen is we've already reduced the npas by 10% by this you know just additional 10% of information we've in, improved the book size by 20% lot of people were these mid level credit score people and the company would formally you know in the past would reject they say okay i'm not very sure now an address says two users same let's say score of 700 giq says good location and for the second user 700 score giq says bad location you can take a call on that first user so you're not losing out on an opportunity so that's how book size is increasing we've already in the last one year we've probably answered more than 100 million this is all happening automatically uh, much like the upi system it's a ping which goes into the servers 100 million applications have already been processed it's different example you might the question you might want to ask the system is can i predict affluence uh, using you know locations so you create your own model i'm not going to tell you what an affluence neighborhood looks like because your definition could be very different from mine so you throw in your data it automatically picks out what should be the correlation of location into it what is the impact of location into it and it the beauty is that it answers for the entire country because this is non personalized data we are not answering on the person we are answering on the address that person may not have uh, a past history and past credit score but we will still answer that how good or how bad this user looks um uh, in essence what the companies are using is a graph like this for every user that is walking in you're getting a giq score along with all sorts of other parameters that you're considering this is real data and this is what we have seen over a period of time that when giq says that location is very good you experience 10% looms um experience delay but when giq says that locations are bad you experience a lot of delay so um it's the platform itself is not limited to uh, fintech it's being used in e-commerce as well but it can do a lot of stuff as long as your data science team can tweak the models according to their needs going back to this picture i'm just going to zoom into bombay maharashtra again like like i said this is actual data um, these greens now for a particular client these are high profile users what it's telling them is that these greens you should keep chasing these guys but those reds you should be a bit careful and this is normalized to india uh let's look at that bunch of you know amber over there what is exactly happening here it's a slum but then it's a slum and that's what we are saying that these could be risky user but if you look around at the edge of the road there are greens as well so the separation is coming just by looking at an address um zooming back to mumbai again it tells me where the good users are it i can compare it to any any user you know i can train it on a set of 50000 users now i can start predicting all these new users coming from bangalore what is likely to be their behavior by the way you know this is a lending chart but this is also very similar to e-commerce chart in fact that green that you see is 2% of entire india's e-commerce happening there uh, so these things give you that relation but now i go to dehradun and i get an answer on dehradun as well so that person coming from raipur or rajpur is equivalent for me to a user coming from bombay and that's what the system does it starts looking at these location metrics and starts giving you answer tailored to, uh, you know to your needs 
we're working with a set group of clients. We've proven our worth. Uh, every day we are making a million decisions automatically. That's what we are. I'm Dave. Uh, we have Ronak here. Uh, very happy to speak to you post the uh, discussion. Anybody interested, I can, we can, you know, get talking very soon. Thank you very much.